Hey everyone, so this is going to be the first entry in the binary cognitive mechanics series. It's going to build off of um, the previous stuff I, the previous video I had on uh, cognitive entropy. But if you haven't seen that, it's not such a big deal. What I'm really trying to get to is this uh, lower level of complexity, this model. Um, and I want to start from some kind of basic uh, understanding here. So we'll get started. So information generally has a structure. So information has to be lower entropy than its surroundings. That's kind of what information needs to be for it to exist. And so you see that there's levels of entropy that go up and up and up until it becomes its surroundings. And what, is, what that does is it makes it separate from its surroundings. And so each level of entropy is going to make it a little bit more separate. And you see that kind of in like the way the cell is structured. So like the DNA at the center of the cell is very low entropy. And then as it gets out and out, it start, it's more and more protecting the, the information, the DNA information in the middle. It's protecting it. It serves more of a purpose of protecting that central information. And the same thing happens with, I don't know, stars and all the, everything else that is sort of uh, information reducing entropy. It, it has a low entropy state. It's got to be different than its surroundings. And that's how you know that there is information there. Otherwise, there wouldn't really be information. Okay, so we've got the high entropy area and the low entropy area. And if they were all the same, there, it just wouldn't be information. It would just be sameness. Information is differentness, is um, complexity. So another thing is uh, entropy always increases. So you're going to get a deterioration in time of any information you have if you're not upkeeping it, if you're not preserving it, if you're not pr protecting it in some way. So you'll see that the 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 circle will get bigger. It'll get more the same. It'll combine more with its surroundings and the center will get smaller. So there's two reasons why the center could get smaller. It could get smaller because it's getting more dense. And that actually means the the entropy is actually going down. So it's actually the information is getting more dense. But at the same time, it could just be that you're losing some of the information, you're deteriorating it. And so that's kind of more what is happening here, because if the outside is getting bigger, the information is deteriorating. And so we could talk about information interacting as in like one worldview coming in contact with another worldview and what happens. Um, you could talk about this in terms of big pe of peoples. But what I want to focus on here is more um, what happens when within your mind, when you have two pieces of information that start interacting with each other. So within your mind, you have these degrees of separation for information and how it's continuous when it's high entropy versus low entropy. And it sort of preserves that packet of information in your mind. And you get these two types of information in your mind interacting. And so when these two types of information in your mind interact, um, again, this is one perspective of looking at it. But when you look at it in this perspective, you can actually um, get to what computation comes in. So when they connect, you get something called computation. Computation is when information is compared, when it's exchanged. You need two separate pieces of information for computation to occur. You can't really have computation in the same information. It's got to, you have to have that comparison. You have to have two places to store, two ways of looking at it, and then you have them interact. So does it reject the information? Does it accept the information? How far does it go in before it repels? Sometimes you get memes, so information can multiply like cells and each of them can get lower and then you can recombine and check later. So all of this, all of these dynamics of information is all based on, on this idea of computation. And if this goes and computes with a whole bunch of different pieces of information and comes back, um, the computation will look really different. It'll have to recompare itself, right? Update. Okay, and so... If, if the two pieces of information get far enough, get deep enough, right? So this is where the extroverted computation is. If they get deep enough, you get intro, introverted low entropy computation. So you've got all of these different levels of interaction. Again, low entropy can interact with high entropy at the beginning as well. Okay, so introverted computation uh, is low entropy computation. So you'll see that these two pieces of information are comparing the low level. High entry computation, high entropy computation is this sameness, um, seeing if that lines up and internalizing. So that's when how high entropy computation is, is affecting low entropy. How can you make the compu the high entropy a little bit lower? And at the same time, when you do that, this should grow. You should get more and more information in here and it should add more and more information. So it's taking this extrovert, this information into the introverted side, right? So it's not just the low entropy interacting, it's the low entropy with this high entropy. This is internalizing and externalizing is the reverse. So checking that low entropy information against the high entropy information. And again, the more you externalize, the more you're going to refine what it is you're externalizing. If you shoot and you miss, you're going to be able to refine this a little bit more. So the next time you won't miss. 
Um, okay, so now let's get a little bit into what the definition of externalizing is. But before I've got the four little questions here. So how much information is compared and computed before they merge or survive as individual pieces, right? So they can split up again and, you know, one could take from the other or whatever. Um, how much information is accepted and copied between each side and how much is rejected and made opposite? How does this interaction occur in our own cognition? So if it's not between two people, but it's more between different parts of our brain. And then how does this interaction occur between populations? So just four of like questions to keep in mind when you're looking at this kind of uh, information model. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the orientations. And this is what we were going into before, the introverted. Uh, this, this is what makes up what the orientations are, introverted, extroverted, externalizing, and internalizing. Um, and so let's get a good definition for externalizing. So this was really lucky that I found Young uh, was already talking about externalizing when it comes to functions. So introverted sensing is an introverted function, but it is externalizing. And this is what he had to say about it. So such a type can easily make one question why one should exist at all, or why objects in general should have any justification for their existence, since everything essential still goes on happening without them. What's the purpose of things? It's looking at how how can information be applied. And if it's not applicable, then it's not relevant. I'm not gonna overlook, they're gonna overlook it. And so that's essentially the externalization um, process is, is applying information and seeing how it plays out, right? So we can have a little duff definition here. Externalizing is the process by which information is verified and justified through application. And now I tried to find a little one on a uh, quote here for what internalizing is. I found one in extroverted sensing here. So anything new that comes within his range of interest is acquired. So internalizing is the process by which information is established as accepted information. To acquire that information. It's new. I'm going to acquire that. Okay. So now let's talk about the surprise function, because I think we could really delve a little bit deeper into what internalizing and externalizing is through this surprise function. So the surprise function is from artificial intelligence, and it's basically the measure by which an event out is outside of the bounds of the expected, right? So the AI has built up a library, a process. It's going to get new information how by whatever means it gets new information. And if this new information is outside the bounds, it can't predict that new information. It's it gets surprised. The surprise really just means, hey, I need to compute more. I need to I need to reduce my entropy more. You know, that surprise can't ever happen again. I can't be surprised again. I've got to adjust my model. I've got to update. And so then there's two ways to get surprised. So the first one is externalized surprise. So the measure by which information is contradicted when tested through replication. So you could try to apply informa information. And when you're applying the information, seeing how it plays out. And if you have a high surprise, that means you really need to um, work on that information, um, adjust it, readjust it, and then try again. And if it, you know, and if it goes according to plan, so then you can reinforce these pathways in your brain. It's like, hey, look, um, this information is well externalized. So it must be very true. Let's hold on to this. This is, this is good information. This is good low entropy information that can be used and used again. And then internalizing surprise is the measure by which information is contradicted by previously held information. So when you're trying to break things down and internalize it, it's, um, well, first of all, you're trying to assimilate it and put it into a, a model, a cognitive model. You're trying to update. And, and this is what I'm saying here is you're trying to update also models that you already have, right? If you have a lot of surprise when you're internalizing, that means either you've never seen this before, so you couldn't expect it, or um, it's contradicting some kind of internal model you have. And so this kind of this kind of surprise leads you to process more to do more computation around the internalizing so that you can you can reduce that surprise in the future and it, what's interesting is like people that are responsible for internalizing for example are going to go out and get as much surprise as they can and try because how do you reduce surprise by exposing yourself to more and more surprise you're not going to be surprised by um i don't know a wolf eating a rabbit if you leave them alone in a cage together if you've already seen that happen if you've never seen that happen and all you've seen is disney movies where wolves and rabbits are, are friends you put them in a cage together and one eats one you'll get surprised because because you didn't update that information yet and so the internalizing process is is reducing that surprise um, and the externalizing process is the same thing um, you could see this you, it could, it, you could have the same situation but it's like okay now I know what, if I like the wolf is applicable, the, th this is how you can apply the wolf. I can get it to kill this rabbit. Okay. What happens if I put a cat? Okay. The cat will also eat the rabbit. And so by externalizing things, it's by taking this information and seeing how it applies. If the wolf and the rabbit come together in the cage and don't do anything, just like the Disney show, then it, there's not much use to it. There's no purpose to it. So why would you ever do that? So that's more the externalizing way.
And so we can add um, an extroverted version of externalizing and an introverted version of externalizing. And so this is where, so you had externalizing and extroverted, that's where extroverted judgment comes. In order to externalize something that's extroverted, you have to judge it. So this surprise, the surprise here when you're judging things is the measure by which extroverted information is contradicted when tested through application. So I'm making a judgment on something. And if I'm right, if I'm right about that judgment, or if I'm wrong about that judgment, if the judgment helps me in any way, if it's useful and practical, or does it surprise me and bite me back? Was that person mean to me? <gasps> surprise, they were mean. And so, and so that's where the, that's where the judgment is looking for surprise. And, and yeah, it's, it's reducing surprise by applying itself. And then the introverted externalized surprise is the measure by which introverted information is contradicted when tested through application. And so it's like more like a Rube Goldberg machine or something like something way more complicated and, and, and convoluted and, and because it's introverted, it's low entropy and seeing how that applies. So it's like, oh, I got to tweak, I got to tweak, um, this, this jump here, it overshot the jump like in this long machine train. So now it makes the jump and it hits the bar properly and the machine can continue going. And so that's kind of more what the externalizing um, of the introverted is. It's 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 a very fine tuned way of uh, externalizing. And so we call this ascribing. It's the measure by which introverted information is contradicted when tested through application. Let's just go back to SI here. So yeah, such a type can aim easily make one question why one should exist at all or why objects in general should have any justification for their existence since everything essential still goes on happening without them. What's the purpose of this? If it has no purpose, there's no reason to even try it. There's no even purpose to even use it. And that's where you get the tunnel vision. Even NI is doing this. It's doing the tunnel vision. It's only seeing things that can advance it towards its goal. Towards its goal. It's, it gets that tunnel vision. Um, extroverted internalized surprised um, is, a, is a perception. So it's the measure by which extroverted information is contradicted by previously held information. Um, and introverted is the measure by which introverted information is contradicted by previously held information. And that's a, that's where you make a that's where you make your decision. It's um, you have introverted information. It's contradicted by previously held information. You have to make a decision. What do you do with that information? Introverted information because both of them are introverted. And so do you throw out do you throw out your previously held information? Do you update it? Do you merge that? And so this is, you really have to make a decision here. With a perception, you don't have to make a decision. You have extroverted information, but it's being contradicted by previously held information. Well, you're like, okay, let me just perceive it. I don't have to reduce it in entropy. I can leave it as high entropy and this is low entropy and and wait, wait to um, reduce its entropy. That's this. Okay, now let's just go a little deeper on the orientation and the needs. So this is, this is these uh, JE right? All of this stuff here. So it's like, where does it show up? So you'll see here that um, you're externalizing high entropy information and computing high entropy information. And here as well, you're um, uh, computing um, high, high entropy co uh, computation. And then you're also, um, it's also internalizing high entropy information. And then you see when you bridge two together, for example, so if you wanted to bridge these two together, right? That's supposedly play, right? So what are you doing? You're processing, both of them are computing high entropy information. They're both computing that high entropy information, but one of them is internalizing um, high entropy and the other one is externalizing high entropy. And that's essentially what play is doing. And then, and yeah, the same thing if you want them to both. Okay, so let's say both are internalizing. So introverted judgment and extroverted perceiving are both internalizing, but one is processing, um, computing high entropy information and then internalizing. And the other one is internalizing and processing and computing low entropy information. And so really you get that conversion. You get, hey, this high entropy information is coming, is being internalized all the way. That's what we call consume. It's being completely internalized. And then it's being try and you try to fit it into whatever framework that you already have. This low entropy computation is trying to fit into this model, this DNA in whatever way you can, right? And then, okay, so we're going to talk about the approaches uh, later, not in this video, but just to show you what how you can combine this with uh, your quadra. So we got alpha quadra as an example. So we have extroverted feeling, and you just hear this is high entropy implicit computation and externalizing experience. And these are the two things that extroverted feeling is doing. And these are the two things that extroverted intuition is doing. It's high entropy, implicit computation and internalizing intellectual 
And so if you you can combine them and you can sort of work it together with that, and then we have we have some a uh, shorthand of what these two are both doing independently. Um, we'll get into that later. But yeah, so this is just a little bit more so we can sort of define our terms a little bit when we're starting to talk about this. So really the center of this is um, externalizing versus internalizing, okay? So these are really the two things to take away from here. The functions are doing them. And again, this is how they do it. The, the extroverted externalizing is DE, JE, and introverted externalizing is OI. And this is how the needs are built. Okay, so that's the video. And hopefully this was understandable. Okay, bye guys.